In this video, we're going to learn how to use defaulted functions in C++. So when defining a class in C++, the class will automatically be given certain special member functions, default versions of the constructor, destructor, copy constructor, and so forth are provided to our class. However, sometimes these default functions may not be available. So for example, if we define our own parameterized constructor, the default constructor will no longer be available but we can use the default specifier to explicitly request that the default constructor be included in our class. So for example, let's make a simple class for representing some data. We'll just call the class data and data objects will have a single public member variable called value that's going to be an int. Now we can initialize a data object despite the fact that we haven't defined a constructor. And that's because the C++ compiler is going to give us a default constructor. So here when I say data data1, the default constructor is being used. I could set the data1 object's value member variable. I could output that value and it's going to work okay. So we'll output data1.value followed by the value itself and then an inline. And if I save this and run it, we'll get that data1.value is equal to 8. Right there. Now, if we did supply a parameterized constructor, we would actually lose the default constructor. So for example, let's say we define a constructor that has a parameter, set value, and we're gonna set the value member variable to the value of set value, like this. Now, if I try to save and run the program, we'll get a compiler error. It says here, no matching constructor for initialization of data. So because I provided this parameterized constructor, the default constructor that accepts no arguments no longer exists. What if we want that constructor? This is where we can use defaulted functions. So I could say data open bracket, close bracket is equal to default semicolon. And this default specifier here will request that the compiler explicitly include the default constructor. Now if I save and run the program, it's going to work again because this here had the default constructor explicitly included. And that's the basic idea behind defaulted functions. We can use them in situations where we still want the default special member functions to be provided by the compiler for our class. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.